So I'd like to invite our colleagues from South America now. So we have Professor Escuado, who's probably the most experienced person at doing the CLEAR procedure, and uh, Professor Chayat, also who's done a lot of experience with the CLEAR procedure as well, um, to have some comments now for this discussion. So Louis, let's start with yourself. Um, so what I want to ask is that you were quite new to lenticular extraction before you started the procedure. And I think that will be interesting for people to know, because there'll be a lot of novice surgeons listening um, to this webinar. And what were the key features do you think that has the advantage of clear over other lenticular extraction technologies? Okay, I think Yod, the three most important things could be a low energy concept that can overlap the spots and give us more smooth surface. Uh, the second one, centration during an arctic, uh, uh, active uh, vacuum. And the other one, the possibility to use a two different ports, one for the anterior and the other one for, for posterior. I think that could be really important to identify the lenticular age, especially for example, for low diopter correction. And also, especially like you say, for the learning curve, to avoid the most uh, worst complication that is lenticular rupture during the section. Uh, Arturo, if you, um, you know, you've been doing um, clear as well. So what would be your advice or experience um, about with respect to centration? Because centration can be difficult with other lentical experiences because you're relying on the patient to basically fixate. I mean, uh, do you use the internal fixation for the centration or do you basically adjust it um, on, on the laser? Yes, so uh, what we do is we place three marks, uh, two marks horizontally at the zero and 180 degree. Uh, uh, and then we place a mark inferiorly at 90 degrees. And what we try to do is to match the three marks with the Myers that we see at the laser. And that has been extremely easy and accurate in, to do so that's how we center and we we love the fact that we can move the centration and that gives us a lot of peace of mind and uh, it's been very reliable the um Versailles, just on your following on your talk i mean it was interesting to see the differences between flat and curved application i mean a lot of people ask about that about would that affect lens skill do you think it would affect the amount of treatment you can do if you're using a flat applicator to, to with this or a curved applicator with respect to the higher dioptric powers, um, I, I'm absolutely sure that this does not make in the current current version it doesn't make a difference at all. Whether it's plain or it's slightly curved doesn't make a difference at all. It might be very different once we have curved interfaces with a curvature uh, radius of 10 millimeters or less. Then there might be some adjustments and. I could imagine that we would create much, much better uh, aesthericities of the cornea using then uh, lenticular extraction. Currently, it's a little bit more or less. Remember that uh, some people have a cap thickness of 120 migrants, others use 150 migrants, and you get uh, reasonable differences regarding the aesthericity of the, of, of the, of the flattening zone. Uh, so, uh, Louis, so back to yourself again. So, a, a lot of people say that one of the things they worry about, certainly when they're doing lentil extraction, is it's certainly longer than making a LASIK flap, and suction loss can be a little bit of an issue. And you know, whenever we're doing lentil extraction procedure, what is one? What is your experience with of, of people who get suction loss? And if they get it, what do you do when they get suction loss? Okay, you know, I started uh, since uh, from the beginning with, with Simmer, and what I like most is especially the vacuum concept with them. Um, I did many, many lazy flap with the Fento, and really hard to, to have any problem for vacuum. And could be this really important also because, you know, the vacuum with the Simmer platform is on the sclera and also can help us to give us you know, a larger diameter for the lenticulum that could be in the future really important for hyperopia correction. So I think it's, it's really, really important and I, uh, I really don't have uh, uh, issues during the procedure with the backend system of the similar platform. Great, okay. And, and, and the timing is about, I mean, uh, approximately about 29 seconds uh, for the actual lenticule procedure itself with the, yeah. with the ZA for the clear extraction.
So Arturo, I just want to ask you about another question that people often ask is about nomograms. What are you, what are you programming um, with the laser? We know that there are a lot of different nomograms that people use for lentil extraction. So what are you actually doing with the program? Are you programming manifest refraction or do you alter it like we do with our LASIK patients? What are you actually programming for your patients undergoing this procedure? So far in the cases we have a dial manifest refraction and so far it's been very uh, good and results are being also very accurate. Uh, we need to do obviously much more cases to make sure that, you know, especially when combining with astigmatism, uh, the, the nomograms will be very accurate, but so far it's been great uh, just using manifest refraction. I, I, I should mention that CIMR is planning to do prospective studies uh, in Europe uh, with uh, at least 100, most probably 300 uh, uh, study size. And uh, as a part of, of these studies, or the important part is to get nomograms uh, that are reliable and that you can, uh, that even the new, new guys can rely on. So I'll just fit us off some regulatory um, information so it's everybody to know. So currently the laser is approved for use for up to, for minus 0.5 diopter sphere up to basically minus 10 and also cylindrical correction from zero to basically minus five. But as Professor Sala mentioned, obviously collecting data is going to be important to establish nomograms for basically everyone to use. Um, if you'd like for more information about any of the talks that you've heard today, please go to the virtual Azima booth and contact your uh, Azima for more details, especially if you want to hear about the keratoplasty module, the cataract module, or obviously the new exciting clear module for refractive surgery. So thank you all for attending. I wish you a successful uh, meeting in Amsterdam, e either in reality or virtually. And I hope to, that we will see each other again uh, sometime soon, probably in the new year. Thank you very much.